Bonsoir. Good evening. Mon nom est André Roy et j'ai le plaisir d'être le doyen de la Faculté des Arts et Sciences à l'Université Concordia. I'm delighted to welcome our graduates, their families and friends, and our distinguished guests to the Spring 2016's Convocation Ceremony. Je vous souhaite tous la bienvenue à ce jour mémorable de collation des grades. Convocation is a very, very special day in our academic year, but it's mostly a very, very special day for our students today. Our students and our supporters celebrate the reward of tremendous efforts to get here. Graduates, enjoy your moment. It's yours. Savourez cet instant. Il vous appartient. Félicitations à tous nos diplômés. Congratulations to our 2016 graduating class. Now, would you please join Ms. Colleen Bartley, mezzo-soprano, in the singing of O Canada. Welcome, bienvenue. Renowned jazz musician Wynton Marcellus has said, if you want to make an intelligent contribution, you have to listen to what others have to say, especially those who are different. As students, you've had the opportunity to listen and to learn. And hopefully, you have recognized and embraced that which was different and familiar. One of Concordia's greatest strengths is its diversity. Each one of you here has contributed to that diversity in some way, and our collective learning experience has been enriched because of it. Chacun et chacun d'entre vous a contribué à bâtir une diversité qui nous enrichit. Going forward, as citizens of our interconnected world, let the different connections you make and the relationships you build be your greatest source of inspiration and hope. And let an open and curious mind guide you as you continue to shape your futures. Thank you, congratulations, and please be seated. What a beautiful day. Dear graduates, invité distingué, mesdames et messieurs, félicitations à chacun et chacune de nos nouveaux diplômés en cette magnifique journée de réjouissance. Graduation is a special day for you, 
for your support networks, your families, loved ones and friends, as well as the Concordia community and your fellow, fellow alumni who have collectively collaborated with you to make this day possible. I am thrilled and honoured to share this special milestone with you. Le valeur d'une formation universitaire est incontestable et en obtenant votre diplôme, vous avez acquis un grand avantage dans notre société. Mais il y a autre chose. The lessons gleaned from textbooks and professors were just the beginning. Your challenge now is how to acquire knowledge on your own using the education and skills you developed here at Concordia. We stop growing when we stop learning, and therefore the road to success is truly always under construction. Take it from me, I'm a 65-year-old work in progress. Success is not determined by financial wealth or even the approval of our peers but rather success is defined by the extent to which we are able to build our communities and help our fellow citizens. There's a famous maxim that says, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. Our backgrounds and circumstances may have influenced who we are, but we are all responsible for who we become. You must continue to be open with outstretched arms and open hands to be willing to receive, but also to give. Define success by the degree to which you positively affect people in your lives. En tant que citoyen averti et engagé, vous, les diplômés, êtes bien placés pour exercer une influence extrêmement bénéfique sur notre monde en évolution constante. Progress and change now lie squarely in your hands. As Buckminster Fuller once said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. There is no shortage of opportunity to get involved. There is no methodology that cannot be improved and no science, engineering, art or business that cannot be enhanced by the energy, enthusiasm and skills you all possess. To thrive rather than merely survive, you will have to be adaptable and resilient. You will have to be leaders of change, not followers. Do not be afraid to lead, not only by example, but also by exerting a positive influence on those around you. Remember that if you elevate others, you elevate yourself. I know that for many of you, this is a period that can be unsettling, given the uncertainty that may lie ahead. You are transitioning from an environment where everyone told you what you should do to an environment where you now have to decide for yourself what you want to do. Wherever you go and whatever you do, the harvest of knowledge, experience and values that you have learned and absorbed here at Concordia will be as relevant for society as you make it. Be bold, be imaginative, be prepared to fail, to continue to learn and to succeed. Trust me, you can and will make a difference if you follow your passions. When you discover your passion, you will find your life to be an absolute joy. Je vous encourage à rêver, à explorer les choses qui n'existent pas encore, puisque c'est ainsi que vous, avez, vous allez changer le monde et bâtir l'avenir. I am happy that we share a meaningful connection through Concordia, and I hope that today is the beginning of your new lifelong bond with our university and your community. I wish you all good luck, good health, and good fortune. Chapeau et merci. I would like to ask Dr. Alan Shepard to address the audience. Bonsoir and bienvenue à tous et à toutes. 
To our graduates, congratulations. A university degree is a major achievement. And in our 21st century knowledge society, it's a vital one. So much the better if your degree comes from a school with a strong reputation like Concordia's. Université urbaine et engagée, Concordia puise ses forces dans le sens même de ses établissements fondateurs. Loyola College, qui, suivant la philosophie jésuite, privilégie le service à la collectivité. Et Sir George Williams University, qui favorise l'accès à l'éducation. That solid foundation helped the Concordia of today prepare you for a world that admires your can-do attitude, your entrepreneurial energy, and your ambition to make the world a better place. Concordia is now part of your DNA. Tout comme vous, notre université nouvelle génération poursuit son évolution. Nous avons lancé l'an dernier une nouvelle vision stratégique. Inspiré par nos fortes traditions, elle nous indique comment transformer tant le milieu universitaire dans son ensemble. Some of our nine strategic directions include to experiment boldly, to get your hands dirty in research and learning, to mix it up across traditional disciplinary boundaries, and our most popular direction, to take pride. When I'm out and about talking to our alumni, the respect, the gratitude, the pride they have in this institution, and the doors they were able to open with Concordia's help, those are the recurring themes. You know best the value of the education you've received here. I hope you'll tell others. Stay in touch with each other. Stay in touch with us. Bon chance, félicitations, et merci. Mr. Chancellor, it is now my honor to present to you His Excellency, the Right Honorable David Johnston, Canada's 28th Governor General. In this vast country, there are a few figures as distinguished and respected as His Excellency David Johnston. Born in Sudbury, Ontario, the Governor General earned degrees from Harvard University, the University of Cambridge, and Queen's University. Upon graduating in 1966, he quickly established himself as an influential voice in Canadian academia, teaching law at a number of different universities in Quebec and Ontario. Over the course of his still unfolding 40-year career in academia, his expertise on legal and political matters made him a highly sought-after thinker. Brilliant educateur et administrateur, il a effectué de longs mandats à titre de recteur et vice-chancelier aux universités McGill et Waterloo. Figure de proue du milieu universitaire canadien, il a partagé son savoir et contribué à informer la population durant une période où s'est déroulé des conversations nationales de grande importance. As Crown representative and the de facto head of state, His Excellency represents Canada domestically and abroad, and he has been a guiding force behind numerous federal and provincial commissions. Exemplifying an unparalleled dedication to public service, His Excellency is the founding chair of the National Roundtable on Environment and the Economy. His Excellency's many accomplishments, both before and since his installation as Governor General, form an impressive and ongoing list. In 2012, for example, the cabinet du Governor General a ouvert la rencontre de la Crown et des Premières Nations à Ottawa afin de renforcer les relations entre les gouvernements du Canada et les communautés autochtones. En 2013, Son Excellence a établi la Fondation Rideau Hall. Cet organisme caritatif et indépendant et politique aide personnes et organisation à réaliser leurs aspirations pour le Canada grâce à des projets axés sur le développement de la conscience communautaire et de travail bénévole. Recognized with over 20 honorary degrees, His Excellency's accolades are extensive. He is both a chancellor and a principal, 
an extraordinary companion of the Order of Canada, and an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. In 1992, His Excellency received a 125th anniversary of the Confederation of Canada Medal in recognition of his work as an outstanding Canadian citizen. He is also a recipient of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate and the Board of Governors of Concordia University, it is my privilege and honour to present to you His Excellency the Right Honourable David Johnston so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. It gives me great pleasure to ask His Excellency, the Right Honourable David Johnson, Governor General of Canada, for his convocation remarks. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, <clears throat> Chairman of the Board of Governors, President and Vice Chancellor, Distingue Invité, graduating class of 2016, parents et amis, thank you for bestowing upon me this honorary degree from your distinguished and innovative university. I am deeply touched to receive this tribute. And Alan, thank you for that uh, warm and generous introduction. I'm not always so used to receiving introductions like that. I was in um, Rankin Inlet uh, 10 days ago. Sharon and I were part of a trip to northern communities around the Arctic Circle. And I was introduced to uh, a group of um, five and six-year-olds in their junior kindergarten, kindergarten in grade one. And the teacher described the Governor General being there, and at the end of the description, one had the sense that I was the Pied Piper ready to lead them out for a vacation from school. <laughs> so to break the ice, I said to the children, I am the father, grandfather to 12 grandchildren, do you know what my grandchildren call me? No, they call me Grandpa Book. Why do you think they call me Grandpa Book? And I expected the answer would be because you like books or you always read books to your grandchildren, that was the answer little six-year-old girl put up her hand. She says, I think they call you Grandpa Book because you're so old. <laughs> I'm honored to be a friend of Concordia University, one of the most creative, forward-thinking, engaged schools in the country. Je suis honoré d'être ici à Montréal et dans cette merveilleuse province où j'ai vécu pendant longtemps avec ma famille. Et je suis honoré d'être associé à un groupe de professeurs et d'étudiants qui ensemble font des choses remarquables pour notre pays et notre planète. I'm honored to have by my side Dr. Nora Volko, who, like me, is receiving an honorary degree today and is a great pioneer on that marvelous new frontier, the human brain. And we were just exchanging thoughts a few moments ago about um, this great revolution in learning how the mind thinks, how the mind learns. And she was observing that um, about 85% of the human brain we've learned in the last 30 years, with much more to come. I should also say that I'm very happy to be here with you graduates, my peers in the class of 2016, even though I have a little more gray hair. You're ready to take on anything the future has to offer, and indeed to shape that future for the better. Thank you for making me a part of such a signal moment in your lives. Northrop Fry, one of Canada's truly great teachers and scholars of my generation, once indicated that there are four epic events in your life, and they are your birth, your marriage, your death, and your graduation. And the last of those four being the only one when you were sufficiently compass mentis to understand what is going on, so please enjoy this day very much. <laughs> I want to illustrate a story, tell a story and then draw some conclusions from it. If I had an empty jar here at the podium, I would hold it up now, but just imagine in your minds 
that I'm holding an empty jar. And imagine I'm a professor in that first year Economics 101 or Philosophy 101 or Psychology 101, a large class, and the students are all eager because it's first day. And the professor says, this jar, I want you to watch it. Is it, is it empty or is it full? And the students all says, it's empty, sir. And then he reached down to an envelope in the podium and he pulled it out, a little box as a matter of fact, with some rocks in it. And he put the rocks into the jar right up to the top. Empty or full now? It's full now, sir. Another little box and he pulled out some small pebbles, sprinkled them in. Empty or full now? Full now, sir. A third box, this one filled with sand, the sand in. Empty, full or full now, sir. And then finally a can of Diet Coke, which he poured in up to the top. Empty or full now? It's full now, sir. I said, why am I doing this in this class of Economics 101 or Philosophy 101? He said, well, he said, I'm teaching critical thinking. When you first said that jar that I held up initially was empty, it was in one sense, but it was filled with air. And then as you saw different elements being put into it, you had different kind of answers. So that's intended to demonstrate the importance of critical thinking. Look at things from several angles. But he says there's a much more important set of lessons from this jar. Think of this jar as your life now. In this case, entering university. In your case, leaving university. The jar is your life. It's a vessel. It's partly full. It's partly empty. The rocks, the rocks are the really fundamental values in your life. They have to do with your sense of self-worth, your ability to move from me to we, that is the first person singular to the first person plural. And the world gets to be a lot less lonely place when you begin to think in terms of we and your place in helping others. Your sense of compassion, your values, the moral compass, those things to which you sense, have a sense of, of moral obligation and duty. Those are the rocks in your life. The pebbles, well, the pebbles are important. Uh, they are uh, uh, doing your uh, exercises in a particular class. If you're in a team project, pulling your weight at your job, uh, doing your job and doing more. The responsibilities in life that we must uh, fulfill, meet properly if we want to make our appropriate contribution. The sand, ah, oh, that's just stuff. That's hanging out. That's just sort of bobbing and weaving around. And so I'm here to tell you, get the rocks in your jar first, and then the pebbles, and only at the end, the sand. Because if you get it in reverse, there's no place for the pebbles and certainly no place at all for the rocks. And then being a good professor as he was, he paused and waited for a few seconds. And then a very bold girl in the middle row put up her hands and said, sir, but what about the can of Diet Coke? Oh, he says, that's just to remind you that there's always time to sit down and have a cool drink with a good friend. <laughs> I want to tell you just one other story that also has implications in moving from me to we, and it, it comes from my installation address, which was entitled A Smart and Caring Country, A Call to Service, with three pillars, family and children, learning and innovation, and philanthropy and volunteerism. And it was about the sense of the responsibility we have as students, as citizens, especially in this country, Canada, where we have a caring nature. It's very much part of our, of our DNA. And each gesture of kindness and thoughtfulness from me to we uh, has important effect not only on you and the person who helped, but those around you. And I illustrate that story, and I'll finish with this, by um, a story that took place here in Montreal about 25 years ago. Mother Teresa was here for the um, Greater Montreal Prayer Breakfast, and before the breakfast, a group of 50 or so got together with her. And one of our neighbors said, Mother Teresa, we're so moved by your work. What can we do in our own lives to help? And I expected Alan, being a university president of some years, she'd say, I'd, she'd say, write a large check to my settlement in Calcutta. We'll put it to good work. She said, look in your own neighborhood. Look in your own family. I guarantee you that there's someone who needs your love and care. And then she gave a wonderful address along the same lines at the prayer breakfast. In those days, there were four Montreal newspapers, and three of them were very laudatory in what they had to say about her address. The fourth was the newspaper that practiced rail politic, you know, kind of tell things as they are, get the varnish off, get right at the essence of it. And it said she gave a laudable speech, and she's a wonderful woman. She'll probably be canonized by her church as she was, but let's be practical. She operates a shelter for homeless people and uh, people that are starving in Calcutta, India, 250 or so. 
her work is helpful to them, but Calcutta is a city of 20 million people, half of whom live in abject poverty. In a country of a billion people, so many of whom live in the very difficult circumstances. Well, what she does is good. It's a drop in a bucket. It's a drop in the ocean. Um, in the relative scheme of things, does it really count for much? And that's the way the editorial ended. That bothered me for the longest time until I was at a birthday party. We have five daughters. Birthday parties were important matters. And we'd finished a birthday party, and the eldest daughter, age 11, said, Dad, you know the ghost stories you tell the kids at the birthday party? Uh, they're all lies, you know. And the, kid know, the kids know they're lies. They just pretend to be scared because they know it'll hurt your feelings if they don't. <laughs> Why don't you do magic like Dean McFarland does? Andy McFarland was the dean of the School of Journalism at Western. I was dean of law. So two months later, I go to a birthday party at the McFarland home. And here's McFarland the Magnificent, big top hat, gown, flowing mustache, doing magic. And the kids were mesmerized with his card tricks and so on. Then he reached down and he pulled out a glass of water and he said, I will turn this water into wine. I thought, careful, Andy. The last time someone did that was 2,000 years ago with a little more authority than you have. But he had a dropper with a, with a drop of red vegetable dye in it. And he dropped the one drop of red vegetable dye in the glass. And then he, he said, abracadabra, abracadabra, swirled it around. And the clear liquid, clear liquid turned a beautiful shade of rosé. And I thought, that's the one drop from Mother Teresa. I had been thinking of it in mathematical terms or physical terms. I should have been thinking of it as chemical engineering. That one drop of red dye interacting with all the molecules in that glass transfused them and changed the culture. And that's what you do with these acts of giving and acts of kindness. You change the culture. And that's the Canada we aspire to have. Uh, these stories are straightforward. Uh, the lessons are somewhat um, complicated. But they're lessons worth remembering and reflecting upon as you go forward. Your journeys are filled with amazing promise. You are chock full of knowledge, skills, and experience you've gained here in this great institution. Tout comme moi, vous avez le privilège de vivre dans un pays qui valorise la paix, la liberté, la démocratie, la justice, l'équité et l'égalité des chances pour tous. Ces valeurs canadiennes que nous chérissons et nous tenons souvent pour acquises vous serons utiles tout au long de votre vie. Yet what you've gained here at Concordia and those enduring Canadian values, peace, liberty, democracy, justice, equality, constitute a two-way street. There's a give as well as a take. So I pose this question to you and I urge you to reflect upon it. How are you going to use your knowledge, your skills, and your experience and the bedrock values, remember those rocks, on which they rest to create a smarter, more caring country to create a Canada of the keenest minds and the kindest hearts. Well, you might be thinking, why is he asking me? I'm just getting started in my career. Well, to those questions, I say yes. And you have the mix of energy, ambition, and ideas that our country needs. And yes, you're starting out. But your country needs you to begin using your talent today, because very shortly, you will take a pledge that will support that. Je me suis donné comme mission en tant que gouverneur général d'amener les Canadiens et les Canadiens de tous les âges pour suivre les buts. Je vous prie donc de vous joindre à moi pour réaliser cette noble mission en trouvant la meilleure façon pour vous de faire de notre pays un lieu plus averti et bienveillant pour tous les Canadiens et tous les Canadiens. So please join me in fulfilling that honorable mission of creating a country that chooses innovation, inclusiveness, and compassion and find your own way to make our country a smarter, more caring place for all Canadians. Merci. Your Excellency, Dr. Johnson, the room was full when you entered here today but it was made more full when you entered. You have filled our minds and our hearts by gracing us with your remarks here today. You have made Canada a better country with your leadership and your friendship, and we thank you.
Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Dr. Nora Volko, psychiatrist, director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, and a revolutionary scholar in the field of drug addiction. Dr. Volko has led the United States National Institute on Drug Abuse since 2003 with an energy and enthusiasm for research and public advocacy that is unprecedented. During this time, she also maintained a very active research program at the Brookhaven National Laboratory. Over the course of her career, Dr. Volko has made exceptional strides in the scientific study of drug addiction. She was the first to use brain imaging to understand and characterize the brain circuits that are disrupted in drug addiction, while at the same time showing the involvement of these same circuits in other disorders of inhibitory control, including attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and obesity. Her contribution to research, scholarship, and public advocacy in the area of drug addiction place her in the top rank of world neuroscientists. Her research has been transformative in shifting the paradigm of addiction from that of behavioral choice to a brain disease. Drug abuse and other diseases of addiction are among the most devastating problems that plague our society, placing a substantial burden on our healthcare and criminal justice systems. This is exacerbated by public prejudice and the and the temptation to dispel drug addiction as a moral weakness or lack of willpower. Dr. Volko's brain images of drug addicted individuals have made a compelling case for recognizing drug addiction as a disease of the brain with its own characteristic neurochemical and metabolic signatures, just like other diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, depression, and schizophrenia. By bringing attention to the importance of disease of addiction to society, she has demonstrated the power of neuroscience to make a difference in the way addiction is studied and treated. Her work on addiction and other disorders of inhibitory control continues to inspire the next generation of basic scientists and clinical translation of researchers worldwide. Dr. Nora Volko was born in Mexico City, where she completed a Bachelor's of Arts at the Modern American School and her MD at the National University of Mexico. Her psychiatric residency was at New York University where she earned the Longin Fellowship Award as one of the 10 outstanding psychiatric residences in the United States. She has since worked and taught at the University of Texas Medical School, the Brookhaven National Laboratory and Stony Brook University. Dr. Volko has edited several books and published over 100 book chapters and over 600 peer-reviewed research papers, many in high-impact journals including Science, Nature, Nature and Neuroscience, Neuron, JAMA, and PNAS. As a mentor and educator, Dr. Volko influenced an emerging generation of women and men in STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Her work on addiction and public advocacy is recognized around the world and has won her prestigious, prestigious awards from numerous professional, academic, and public institutions. She was a Samuel J. Hyman Service to America Medal finalist and was inducted into the Children and Adult with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder Hall of Fame. She was also elected to membership in the Institute of Medicine in the National Academy of Science and received the international prize from the French Institute on Health and Medical research for her pioneering work in brain imaging and addiction science. Dr. Volko has repeatedly been listed in publications including Times, Newsweek, Washingtonian Magazine, and the US News and World Reports as one of the top innovators and powerful people who shape our world. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Dr. Nora Volko so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa.
like to ask Dr. Nora Volko to please address the convocation. Good evening, everybody. Congratulations to the graduates. And uh, I w it's an honor for me to be here for many, many reasons, but very importantly for allowing me to share this very important moment with you and for making me part of the University of Concordia. I want to thank all of the members that nominated me and those that approved for me. And I also want to thank the governor for his very kind words. I get asked very frequently why I chose to do science and why did I devote my professional life to understanding the effects of drugs and addiction. For science, it is easy because I'm a very curious person. And science is the discipline that allows you to use your curiosity to generate knowledge and to use it for solutions. But why study drugs and why study addiction? And I, and I don't know precisely um, when I made that decision, but I do know that there is a memory, a very old memory, that imprinted me to the, to the matter of drugs and alcohol and their devastating consequences. I was four or five years old. We were having dinner with my sisters. And a telegram came for my mother. And when she finished reading it, she started crying. She did not want us to see her cry, so she left the room and closed the door behind her. I had never seen her cry, and I wanted to console her. So I asked her to let me in to open the door. But she never did. Next morning, my father told us that my mother's father had died. And growing up, I would hear rumors that he had been an alcoholic. Just as, well as I was hearing rumors that my favorite uncle was an alcoholic. And the mysteriousness of these conversations, the secrecy of the topic, the pain to the family, made me curious to understand what was it to be an alcoholic, what it did mean, and to try to do something that would help. So that's why I went to medical school and later on in psychiatry. However, as a medical student and as a psychiatry resident, I was constantly confronted by the discrimination against patients with an addiction an alcoholic who was refused treatment because on the justification of what would be the point. An addicted person who would not be getting psychiatric help because he was inflicting this on himself or herself. And they were very unpredictable. In the university hospital, where I first worked when I finished my residency, one of the most prominent psychiatrists of the time a very influential person, passed a rule that forbade any patient with an addictive disorder to be admitted into the psychiatric unit. So I started doing research. And I started as a medical student, then as a resident, and then the rest of my life, trying to understand how drugs affect the brain and how that affects behavior. Out of this work came findings that identified very specific changes in chemistry and in function in the brain of people that were addicted that opened up the door for the concept and the recognition that addiction was a disease of the brain. And with this change in narrative from it being something that you choose to do to a disease of the brain had already emerged. My mother finally told me the history of her, her father. At that time, she was dying of ovarian cancer. And she didn't want me not to know what had happened. She told me her father had been an alcoholic and that in her inability and his inability to control his drinking, he had committed suicide. I was devastated. And I was devastated 
not just because of the recognition of what it must have, me have meant for him, the pain, the self-hatred for not being able to control your own behavior, the helplessness. But I was also devastated because despite all of the work that I have been doing in addiction, it had been insufficient to erase the shame of stigma from addiction in my mother. And I then realized that knowledge, even if it has solutions by itself, is insufficient to change the culture unless you change the understanding and the feelings. We now know much more about drug addiction. We have characterized the changes in the brain, among which is the disruption by drugs of the areas of the brain that allow us to exert free will. That is, our ability to make a judgment, make a decision, and carry it through. And this explains why a person that's addicted no longer can control his or her behavior, even when they no longer want to take the drug, as in the case of my grandfather. We now have multiple therapies that allow us to treat addiction as other medical illnesses. Yet, these are not being used in the healthcare system. But this is about to change. And it is changing not because of knowledge or science, per se. Because currently, in the United States, we are losing one person every 20 minutes from an overdose to an opioid drug, whether it is heroin or prescription opioid medications. This epidemic of overdose deaths was born at, out of the continued stigmatization and ignorance for the problem of drugs and addiction in the healthcare system. But the healthcare system cannot afford not to treat them because the number of people dying is increasing and it is of all ages, socioeconomical classes and ethnicities. History has showed us again that ignorance and stigma can have catastrophic consequences. I hope we learn that it is knowledge and not ignorance, commitment and not indifference, compassion and not stigma that will allow us to conquer the challenge of opioid addiction, as well as other challenges ahead. Each one of you will choose your paths and in them, you will encounter many challenges ahead. But solving them, and in the process helping others, is one of the most rewarding experience of being a human. Thanks very much for allowing me to share with you and your family this extraordinary moment in your lives. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for your remarks, for showing us the importance of curiosity and knowledge to strive for solutions not only in medicine but in life. Thank you for your remarks and for your commitment to deal with addictions and life's challenges through research and education. Thank you very much. I would like to call upon the Vice President Research and Graduate Studies and Interim Provost, Vice President Academic for the conferring of the degrees.
Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate, I present to you the candidates for the doctoral and doctorate degrees, for the master and magisteriate degrees, and for the graduate diplomas and certificates in the Faculty of Arts and Science. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for these degrees, diplomas, and certificates. Monsieur le Chancelier, au nom du Sénat, je vous présente les candidats au doctorat et à la maîtrise, ainsi qu'au diplôme et au certificat de deuxième cycle de la Faculté des Arts et des Sciences. J'atteste qu'ils satisfont aux exigences de ces grades, diplômes et certificats. Will the doctoral and doctorate, master and magisteriate, diploma and certificate candidates please stand? By the powers granted in the university charter, I admit each of you to the appropriate degree, diploma, or certificate as approved by Senate and certified by the interim provost. En vertu de l'autorité que me confère la charte de l'université et for de l'approbation du Sénat et de l'attestation de vice-rectorat exécutif aux affaires académiques, je vous décerne les grades, diplômes, ou certificat que vous postulez. Please be seated. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate, I present to you the candidates for the bachelor and baccalaureate degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Science. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for these degrees Monsieur le Chancelier, au nom du Sénat, je vous présente les candidats du baccalauréat de la Faculté des Arts et des Sciences. J'atteste qu'ils satisfont aux exigences de ce grade. Will the bachelor and baccalaureate candidates please stand? By the powers granted in the university charter, I admit each of you to the appropriate degree as approved by Senate and certified by the interim provost. En vertu de l'autorité que me confère la charte de l'université et for de l'approbation du Sénat et de l'attestation de vice-rectorat exécutif aux affaires académiques, je vous décerne les grades que vous postulez. Please be seated. While our graduates prepare to cross the stage, I invite you to enjoy the music of the Encore Brass Quintet. Thank you.
I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Doctor of Doctorate in Philosophy from the following programs. Biology, Chemistry, Individualized Program, Pure Science, Mathematics, Psychology. Sasha Engelhardt. Yu Zhen. Matthew Libovich. <laughs> Derek O'Flaherty. Anthony Noche. <laughs> and Almi Governor General Gold Medal. Radek Budin. <laughs> Bruno Richard. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Masters of Magisteriate in Science from the following programs, Biology and Chemistry. Emily Anderson. Michel Leblanc. Ala Magnas. Amanda Piano. <laughs> Stephanie Schooner. Madie Tabaishe Shaife. <laughs> William Kopp. <laughs> Amanda Gabriel. <laughs> Pujin Lee. Lee. Quan Ying Li. Arum Mansuri. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Arts from the following program Economics. Nandim Chaudhry. <laughs> Chen Chen. <laughs> G. 
Dang Dang. Samuel Isto Lefebvre, winner of the Balver Singh Medal, awarded annually when merited to a graduating PhD or MA student in economics for outstanding achievement in the program. Azin Esmaizda Azari. Tomoki Fudoka. Man Chung Hong. Inji. Pem Bokamando. What's your name? Will you? I need fresh satyan. Celine Sayeg. Rafael Stabel Miranda. Vivian Zeres. Vivian Zeres. Adib Yunus. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Environment for the following programs. Environmental Assessment. Lucia Abalan. Fatima Farouk. Fatima Farouk. Dana Feingold. <laughs> Emmanuel Galeotti. <laughs> Alexandra Iliescu. <laughs> Laura Beth Peterson. Jonathan Ruth. <laughs> Wills Tobin. <laughs> I'm pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Science from the following program, Geography, Urban and Environmental Studies. Cassandra Lamontagne. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in the Teaching of Mathematics. Sabrina De Chico. It doesn't come. <laughs> Technical glitch. <laughs> Daniel Dernazian. <laughs> you have a technical issue? Okay. So we have a technical issue. Christina Perella. Okay. I'm pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate and Science from the program Physics.
James Marshall Porter. Golia Shafi, winner of the Niche Mourage Medal for the MSc in Physics thesis option, awarded annually when warranted to the student with the highest standing in the program. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate from the following program, Psychology. Mariam Boustri. Eric Sudar. David Hertz. Roman Haravik. I'm pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Science from the following departments, Biology, Chemistry, and Biochemistry. Adelekan Farouk Aliou. Jalal al -Rakbani. Zainab Al Rubey, Jem Michel Aquino, Alexander Asimakopoulos with distinction, Lilith Avetician with distinction. Virginie Blondeau et qui Anka Bujinescu Anne Carmel Christina Chavne with distinction. Steven Chicas. <laughs> Teresa Chicote with distinction. Chris Daniel. <laughs> Sean Anthony DiPaolo. Mariana De Viva with distinction. <laughs> Alex Dragon. <laughs> Paula Duncan. <laughs> Rebecca Flores Chinchilla. Seyedina Zainin Yassi. <laughs> Natalia Glibetic. <laughs> Rachel Goldberg Hall. <laughs> CJ Goldman with distinction. 
David Graziano. David Graziano. Adam Guimet. Nadir Guliev, with distinction. Andrew Habrish, with great distinction, winner of the Biology Prize awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in biology. Sherry Hectiver. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Irquesa. <laughs> Amy Jones with distinction. <laughs> Adriana Yanavitz. Valérie Lereux, with distinction. <laughs> June Lee. <laughs> Sean Laponio Yaffe, with distinction. <laughs> Yara Malouf, with distinction. Bianca Mara. <laughs> Melissa McCauley. <laughs> Say it again. Fatima Zora Mukarik. Mohammed Omar. <laughs> Christina, Christina Ortiz. <laughs> Hazel Joy Dandoy Panika. Ashley Prevo with distinction. <laughs> Reginald Ralph with distinction. Adonis Rodaros. Josue Rosales Vasquez. <laughs> Yves Roir, with distinction. <laughs> Daria Rubenstein. <laughs> Belize Recundo. Merka Subs Ali Jamad, with distinction. Hugo Sinha, with distinction. Jana Sinature. Dominique So. Maria Olivia Speranza. <laughs> Julia Stramiello. <laughs> Julia, 
Alexandra Tegan. Mariam Trauche. Ryan Whitaker. Tiwatsu with distinction. Victor Yuan with distinction. Kong Yao Za with distinction. Maytham Ali. Vanessa Angelone. Lisa Arabian. Patrick Asfour. Catherine Belind. Michelle Barbagallo with distinction. Shui Pin with distinction. John Pecolini Corcoran. Frederick Christ. Jacob Coleman with distinction. Michael Coutu. Timothy Daoud with distinction. Sarah Days. Jason Delano, with distinction. Michelle de Blasio. Sabrina Diaz. Hassan El Hussein, with distinction. Amanda Elisi, with distinction. Evangelos Georgiakis. Ibrahim Gabriel. Mariam Ibrahim. Seri Kafarani. Evgenia Kudrina. Stephen Lalonde. June Ray McCarran. Giovanna Marabella. Daniel Madafri with great distinction. Alexandra Paquet with distinction. Katia Farran. Andre Rikavaren. Melanie Ruck. Ashley 
Ashley Sarah. Albert Shalmiev. Albert Shalmiev. Rita Shanudi, with distinction. Joseph Sissian. Sivra Priya Sundralingam. Roya Taheri. Kevin Ugowitzer, with distinction. Karen Yo Wang, with distinction. Mariam Wasi. N South. Michael Glazerman, with distinction, accepting the posthumous degree on behalf of his son, Leslie Glazerman. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts from the following department, Economics. Georgia Babrutsis. Diaray Balde. Stephen Bider. Tommy Boudreau. Timothy Craig Bradbrook. James Byrne. Luca Castaneda. Giordano Cavalier. Jean Paul Simali. Eduardo Champellet. Britika Chiki. Michel Da Callo. Amer Derwish. Colny de Rosier, Tan San Duang, Ahmed Faime, Fouad Gafour. Jared Goodman. Thank you. 
Mei Ting Hu, with distinction. Chong Long Ku. Erwan Hasuna. Jiang Hai Huang. Mojo Kavira. Aisha Karim. Georgios Kuvakas. Alana Marie Kyumjan. Maxine Leopardi. Yi Hao Lin. Ashley Logan. Raymond Lugaretnam. Carmina Mignelli. With distinction. Jing Hui Mo. Gadir Mohammed. Selena Nalinadin. Paolo Oriana Rosalino. <laughs> Alexia Parjes, with distinction. <laughs> Jonathan Pizzicarola. <laughs> Sajidul Koyom. Tasmim Rahman. Anais Ramirez. Simon Rivard, winner of the Economics Prize, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in economics with a Bachelor of Baccalaureate degree in art. Julie Roy. Huda Sadiq. Nicolas Santigada. Paulina Selesneva. David Shoatali. Haman Shing. Aisha Smith. Brian Snow with distinction. Lorella Terlicese. <laughs> Emily Tsai. <laughs> Georgia Civilatkidis. <laughs> <Georgia Tsivilatkides. laughs> 
I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts and Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Science from the following department, Geography, Planning and the Environment. Sama Abdul Saheb. Salma El Salawi. Patrick Awad with distinction. Grégoire Barret. Nesrine Berica. Mardik Bidanian. Owen Bonet. Chloe Boone with distinction. Brigitte Boulet Deschene. Ricardo Cassetta. Sarah Chinnerman. Nicholas Chiaccia. Carl Michael Dorado. Camilla Duarte. Sarah Dufour, with distinction. Ramsey El Homosani. Lauren Farmer. Jordan Ficara. Ralph Francois Cheristal. Michel Gagnon Creeley, with distinction. Mariah Gillis. Ali's Hand, with distinction. Dylan Hayward Mills, with distinction. Amy Hudson with distinction. Fariha Ismatya. Natalia Izomanzano with distinction. Fisan Jafar. Jonathan Kebby. Karin Kieser. Carly Leonard. Brandon Lynn Harris. CJ Ma. Kaylee McEwen. Nathan Maziari. Cameron McGee.
Bronwyn McMorrin. Daniel Thomas McSherry. Dimitri Muteros. Alexandra Nagib. Mia Pearson. Alan Fenn. Lizanne Priadi. Ashley Jane Prudential Macareg. Jamie Radu, with distinction. Gabriel Ricard. Mariela Rodriguez Celis. Stephanie Reutman. Megan Schmidt. Patrick Serrano. Sandra Simber. Abitra Sivasambu. Mary Sprague with distinction. Eliza Timolian with distinction. <laughs> Stéphane Valbrun. <laughs> Ashley Valentini Baller with distinction. <laughs> Devin Watt. Brittany Waugh. <laughs> Wei Zhu. Marshall Davy. Louise Deleg. Louise Deleg. Jordan Hector. Kristen Hirsch Pearson with distinction. Jeffrey Catan. David Ness. Trevor Rollins. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts and Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Science from the following department, Mathematics and Statistics. Mark Etwan Bedard, with distinction. Catherine Boisvert. <laughs> Tao Hong. <laughs> Sabi Dagenet. <laughs> Adam El Kassabi. Frederic Farmer. Yeah. 
Alyssa Galstian. Amin Hamid. Anigal Kenye, with distinction. Sundas Munir. Tina Ravelson. Tina Ravelson. Tori Rosansky. Suri Sadai Samper Hernandez with distinction. Iram Siddiqui with distinction. Julia Vo. Yu Zhen. Joseph Alaki, with great distinction, winner of the Eric O'Connor Mathematics Medal, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in mathematics, and winner of the Mappin Medal donated by the Mappin family and awarded to the highest ranking student graduating with a Bachelor of Baccalaureate degree in science. Jason Azopardi, with great distinction. Vincent Chartier, with great distinction. Keet Dong Chung. Maxine Corriveau. Diego Esteban Cuadrofoy. Daniel Dantico with great distinction. Robert Dubois. Lisa Gums. Dan Shen Hu. Sebastian Jessup with distinction. Justin Lyman. Matthew Marchione. Matthew Marchione with great distinction. Nirubine Nadiraja. Carol Ann Nguyen. <laughs> Megan Nunez, with distinction. Chrisma Patel. Carl Perto with distinction. Roxanne Rodrigue. Eric Sayor. Patrick Sintayi with distinction. Rup Sekan. With distinction. Michelle Tam. With distinction. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Science from the following department, Physics. Peter Collins. 
Peter Collins with distinction, winner of the Walter Raudorf Medal for Physics, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in physics. Nadjazda Gileva. Matthew Shostak the first. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts and the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Science from the following department, Psychology. Joy Agbonze with distinction. <laughs> Safia Ahmad with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Ackerman with distinction. <laughs> Sarah Alkawas with distinction. Julian Alvarez Barkham. <laughs> Natasha Anand. <laughs> Shauna Andruzi Hache. <laughs> Karen Angeli Gru. <laughs> Noelia Arancibia. Helen Armeos. <laughs> Fotini Athanosopoulos. <laughs> Drea Bales. <laughs> Paul Balukas. <laughs> Julian Bay Pold. Catherine Bergeron with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Bergevin with distinction. <laughs> Rebecca Burkett with distinction. <laughs> Samuel Black. Kimberly Bless. James Paniotti George Bowden. <laughs> Melanie Briard with great distinction. Sarah Morgan Burke with great distinction. Sarah Burroughs with distinction. Patrizia Capogrosso with distinction. Daniela Charri. Michael Chartier. Eric Chung. Olivia Choquette. Stasini Chrysanthocopoulos. Andrea Cook with distinction. <laughs> Amelie Krashi. Monica Lillian Crisetta with distinction. Alexander 
Alexandra Esther Dickinson. Ricardo Dizazo. Ashley Duguid. Eileen Elzien. Alexa Ray Falcone. Jessica Fetter with distinction. Connor Frigon. Connor Frigon. Margie Fuentes. Gabrielle Gagne Sir with distinction. Lauren Gazard with distinction. <laughs> Serena Gianotti with distinction. <laughs> Melanie Grega. <laughs> Maud Guimet with distinction. Lauren Halawushka with distinction. Konstantinos Habsis. Trevor Harrison with distinction. Simon Hool with distinction. Halina Innatsenka with distinction. Kenza Iraqi with distinction. Michaela Johnson. Fatumata Juara. Daria Kavenova with distinction. <laughs> Stefan Kulishek. <laughs> Simon Pierre Lozon. <laughs> Soraya Lenoble with distinction. Karen Levesque. Okay. Erica Lamoto with distinction. Nadia Long with distinction. Merely Marcelin with distinction. Maria Marinakis. <laughs> Michela Martiniello with distinction. Sarah Rivero. Patricia Martone. Elisa Marzilli. Daniela Marula. Devin Mirza with distinction. Dina Mina.
Elitsa Mitropolitska. William McCann. Christian Nafal with distinction. <laughs> Kathleen O'Keefe with distinction. <laughs> okay. Caitlin O'Neill with distinction. <laughs> Guillermo Ovalle. <laughs> Matias Pashala with distinction. <laughs> Tara Ashley Paliuka. <laughs> Julien Parron with distinction. Christine Pennell with great distinction. Krista Parati with distinction. Melissa Petosa. Danielle Poirier. Hannah Poupel. Anusha Reddy. Jessica Ryder with great distinction. Brittany Ryerson. Jose Maria Restropo, Restrepo with distinction. Samantha Rochon. Julian David Rodriguez Vargas. Amanda Rosen. Amy Rasta. Elizabeth Sabla. Ellie Sader with distinction. Lensky Sanon with distinction. Darwin Ulysses Sansaloni Santiago. Sharon Shimeka. Tiffany Segovia Nunez. Getra Shanmugaratnam with distinction. Manila Sharma. Amanda Samundik with distinction. Anna Spencer. Julia Sukapane. <laughs> Senia Sukanova with great distinction. <laughs> Julien Thibault Roy. <laughs> Hannah 
Hannah Tied with distinction. Aya Toure. Jennifer Tracy. Natasha Tremblay. Julie Leslie Valencourt. Natasha Valbrun. Sasha Van Frank Adler with distinction. Aphrodite Vanessa Vasilunchanis. Mariana Voronovska. Diana Vosian with distinction. Michael Wilgus with distinction. <laughs> Brittany Zakshevsky. <laughs> Tamara Zeitz with distinction. <laughs> Emmett Anderson. Suhia Baba with distinction. Leila Butarfa with distinction. Valerie Buzo. Rebecca Burderon with distinction. Christina Maria Catania with distinction. <laughs> Alexandra Covey with distinction. <laughs> Tova Cowan with great distinction, winner of the Science College Prize. Awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in the Science College. Michelle Dalla. Jennifer Ferraduros with distinction. Devin Goldstein. Louisa Harcook with distinction. <laughs> Ramsey Hudeb with distinction. <laughs> Reem Hussain with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Yanutzi with distinction. Sibyl Joubert. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Juganadan. <laughs> Christina Kazazian with distinction. Joella Martiri. Angela Ortiz.
Melanie Pels with distinction. Julian Rice with distinction. Jillian Robinson. Ekaterina Rubinov. Melissa Russo with distinction. Ace Sarzep. Edmin Cerulean with great distinction. Emily Stern. Regina Tolentino with great distinction. Sonia Vijendran. The Governor General's Academic Medal, Gold Level, is awarded to the highest ranking graduate student graduating from Concordia University. Dr. Anne Almay defended her PhD dissertation, Membrane Associated Estrogen Receptors and Cognition in Female Rats, in December 2015 under the supervision of Dr. Wayne Brake in the Department of Psychology. Her dissertation marks a significant advance in our understanding of estrogen's effects on cognition and is an outstanding contribution to our understanding of women's health. Dr. Alme is currently a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Psychiatry at McGill University. Your Excellency, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Anne Alme so that you can present her with the Governor General's academic medal, gold level. I would now like to ask Ms. Tova Marie de Meglio Cowan to give the valedictory address. Governor General Johnston, Dr. Volkow, Chancellor Wenner, Vice Chairman Amir, President and Vice Chancellor Shepard, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, families, and friends. I am pleased to address you today on behalf of the graduating class of 2016. There's so much I want to say, and yet at the same time, all that matters is congratulations on graduation. <laughs> We did it, <laughs> and it is an enormous accomplishment. It is an accomplishment we are very fortunate to have the chance to pursue, but our fortune does not diminish our triumph or our hard work. No matter what it took you to get here tonight, congratulations. You, each and every one, deserve it. Félicitations tout le monde. Ce soir, nous prenons le temps de reconnaître tous les défis que nous avons surmontés, tout le travail, la persistance que ça nous a fallu pour arriver ici, arriver à la fin. 
Nous pouvons aussi prendre un moment pour remercier tous ceux qui nous avons aidés et, tout, et réfléchir à toutes les opportunités que nous avons eues, les opportunités qui nous ont permis à réussir un tel accomplissement. Et pour prendre une pause, juste avant de commencer la prochaine étape, vous méritez tous vos accomplissements et toutes les bonnes choses qui à venir dans les prochains mois et années. You deserve all the wonderful, scary, awesome and awe-inspiring things that are coming your way. I hope you'll take advantage of them. I hope that you'll dream big or plan for success or whatever other cliche will inspire you to take leaps of faith. And I hope you'll be comfortable taking leaps of faith knowing that you have a community here to catch you. The people in this room, you may really only know one or two well enough to consider friends, or you may know 10 or 20. But regardless, we here tonight have accidentally become a community. <laughs> Isn't that kind of what Concordia is about, of bringing people together? I've been really lucky to experience that in all kinds of ways. I would not be here tonight without the support of my friends and my peers who stayed up late studying with me and who took me out for ice cream as a reward. <laughs> and I would not be here without the professors who have taken the time to invest in me, to care about me, and to trust me to be involved. That's one of my favorite things about Concordia, that students and professors can work together, embedded in a network of people striving for the same goals. That the sense of community doesn't just entwine us horizontally, laterally, through the student body, but also vertically through professors, students, and administrators. I have been very, very fortunate to experience that, and I want to say thank you to everyone who has been here with me. I hope that even if you haven't had the same frankly blessed experience I have, you can see this community you've been given as an opportunity and a safety net. You may not need it now, You can explore widely, soar freely, but if you need a refuge, a place to roost, or inspiration, these people here tonight are people you can come back to. They may become encouragement for redirection. They may just be comfort. Either way, I hope that the feeling of security, of a safe base, will allow you to push yourself. I hope, grads of 2016, for the rest of your life, you will make brave choices bold choices, good choices. <laughs> I hope that you challenge yourselves and challenge others. In all ways, do things that scare you. Do things that make you proud. Don't forget to push yourself, but also to revel in the joy that comes your way. And know that your community will be here when you need it. So with that, I want to say, félicitations, congratulations, and good luck, but not goodbye. Thank you so much for your remarks, your energy, and your enthusiasm. It is indeed infectious. We have come to uh, closing remarks. I just want to take this opportunity to wish you all well. May you grow from strength to strength as you move forward, and most important, May the force be with you. I would like to ask Vice President Interim Provost Carr for his closing remarks. Thank you. Mesdames et Messieurs, merci d'être venus en si grand nombre de partager avec nous la joie de nos diplômés. Thank you all 
for being here to celebrate the terrific success of the class of 2016. Now, graduates, I, I realize you all want to party and get on to the next great phase of your lives, but before you do, let's just pause for a moment. Hardly anybody gets anywhere in life on their own. We all need mentors, partners, collaborators. We need inspiration, support, love. Sometimes we need a hard reality check, and other times we just need a stroke of good luck. So before you walk out of this hall today and into that next great phase of your life, think about the people who've helped you on your journey to this moment here. Some of them may be faculty members or staff sitting up here behind me and beside me or back on our campuses in their labs, studios and offices doing the great work they always do. And some of them may be your friends and fellow students sitting in the seats or rows beside you. But there's another group we should think about. Graduates, would you please stand up, turn around, face the back of this beautiful room, or look into the cameras that face as far away and thank all of the family members and friends who have supported you. Graduates, can I get you to turn the other way around now, please? I just want to offer one last message, and that is that Concordia is a great university with the promise of an even greater future ahead of it. And on this day, there is no better measure of our success or of our potential than you. We will always be your university, and you will always be our best ambassadors. Thank you for having chosen Concordia as the pathway to your future. You honored us with your choice. And now, as this ceremony comes to a close, please allow us to toast your success with a vent d'honneur in the lobby outside. Merci, félicitations, au revoir, et à bientôt. Thank you.